Nick Crawley is the former head of sustainability at AHMM and now works in the firm's technical design group researching better ways of building. He's just written Cross Laminated Timber, a Design Stage Primer, published by RABA Books. So Nick, uh, with your background in sustainable construction, do you see CLT's main attraction being its ability to help deliver zero carbon buildings? It's an area of focus for a lot of people, but I don't actually. I think it's it's got a lot of other other attractions. Um, I think it's a material that's appropriate to the world we live in, how we design, addressing the challenges we face, and a lot of that always comes back to embodied carbon. Or it is you know it's, it's an area of focus now. But um, from my point of view, I'm really interested in the visual aspects, the quality it brings to a space. Um, I think the the variety, the texture, the fact you can see you know. You can see the life of the wood, our lives reflected in the grain. The grain of the fibre, I think, is, is really interesting how that in turn continues to change over time. I think there's been, it's prompted a lot of, I think one of the big drivers has been, it's prompted a lot of reflection on how we build and significant all round improvement to other forms of construction, some of which are, are literally medieval in how we build. Um, safety issues relating to that are, are you know, absolutely huge. Um, whether it's construction labour force or, you know, in terms of um, working with buildings in the future. I think there are some really significant social issues that don't get talked around in terms of construction impacts, transport through cities, noise and risk issues there. I think quality is a really big thing because you, you pretty much get what you draw. Um, the certainty of what arrives on site, there's no fitting, there's no bodging. Um, it's, you know, it's millimetre perfect to the point that the challenge is integrating it with other site elements, which, which are not, <laughs> you know, it's almost too good in that respect. I think it's maybe worth saying that from an embodied carbon point of view, if you want to deliver lower impact buildings at scale, it clearly is the only, you know, the only route that we can be exploring, maybe in combination with other materials. Um, and I think over the next year or so, we will find the emphasis on um, embodied considerations becoming even more important, but also challenging. Um, in that there's no established way of measuring embodied impacts. No, you know, it's all varies. There's all sorts of ways of challenging that, but it's worth saying that the way we measure operational impacts is still a long way from being precise. You know, we, we, we don't really understand um, how to put a figure on that at design stage that reflects the reality of things. And that hasn't stopped us reconfiguring how we approach design around operational impact. So um, I do think we do need to bear that in mind. But um, from my point of view, I think it's forced change. Whatever, you know, whatever the uh, material that's ultimately chosen, teams should always be considering three options now instead of two. So um, the smarter, you know, in many ways, it's a, the 21st century alternative is forcing improvements in steel and concrete production, which I think is um, from a materials point of view and, you know, ultimately just making better decisions. Um, I think that's, that's perhaps in my view, one of the biggest technical aspects that um, I think um, is, is very exciting. So the, the impact of the Grenfell fire hasn't really helped the use of CLT in spite of the science. Um, how, how do you address fire issues uh, in the book? In many ways it's not been a bad thing because um, the, the lobbying particularly by um, concrete industries and the, um, the, the, the attention on safety issues including fire has been really considerable. Um, and in many ways, the, um, the prescriptive banning of uh, materials and the implied doubt and concern over um, uses elsewhere has had a, a marked impact and caused a slowdown. But I think it's encouraged people to take a step back and better bring together existing research, undertake new research, new testing, um, as people have done all around the world. You know, there's, there's, there's new regulations emerged over the last few years in Australia, most notably in North, North America. Um, allowing much taller timber buildings, even China, you know, they're um, a further ahead of us in terms of allowing building at scale. Um, so I do think it's, um, in many ways, it has um, encouraged people to, to think about what's important and um, better clarify and address those points, which is ultimately a really positive thing because we end up with safer buildings all around. In terms of the chapter in the book, um, Ultimately, the, the, the big message is that people need to respond and design appropriately according to fire assessments. Um, anything other than you know, very simple buildings are not covered by the regs. So people do need specialist input. 
um, but um, the chapter itself covers regulations and testing. It looks at how the UK risks perhaps being left behind, by, for example. It looks at behaviour of the material under fire circumstances, um, so people can understand what their objectives are and design accordingly, whether that's reaction to fire, fire resistance. Um, and then construction issues are addressed. Clearly, the, well, not clearly, but one of the, the most, um, the riskiest times for fire, certainly during a building's life cycle, is during construction. And there's some very well established ways of um, mitigating those risks and helping reduce, reduce, reduce the issues there. And then the, the chapter wraps up with a consideration of issues in, in use affecting the life cycle of the building um, that um, will enable people to ensure the building is used and managed safely over its life cycle. So you, you studied a lot of buildings using CLT uh, all around the world. Which ones excited you most? It has been interesting, and I'd never really joined the dots up until you'd asked this question. Um, in Austria, they have an unbroken tradition of building with timber, and that's what initially got me hooked, hearing the stories from the architects and the people putting these together. Um, but um, I've enjoyed the stories of how, you know, of how things have evolved and how people address contemporary concerns. So in the UK, we've um, clearly done an awful lot in the last 10, 15 years, moving towards more interesting hybrid forms, perhaps, maybe not always full timber, in the US, there's been an incredible change in the last maybe five or six years where the scale of adoption has been um, progressed, is, is, is advancing um, at great pace um, with lots of commercial buildings, headquarters buildings for Microsoft or Amazon or Walmart. Um, most recently, um, it's not actually in the book, but um, really interesting concrete CLT hybrid that's just been re revealed for Adidas, completed in Portland. Um, which could perhaps um, set a model for how we might begin to look at, you know, smarter combinations of materials. In, the Austra in Australia, um, there's been a huge amount done, all mostly with imported timber until quite, until quite recently. Um, but what they've achieved there in terms of timber hybrids, particularly for commercial office buildings, has created some really brilliant looking spaces that have proven to be very popular, um, but have also sold, you know, the, the spaces have let, they've also, the buildings have then been sold to investors. And um, that appeal to the commercial market, I think, is, is particularly interesting. It's a, it's a really great driver for building better ways of building. So you talk about Australia importing its, its timber and Britain being left behind. But um, you know, CLT is an ideal material for modern methods of construction. So why, why don't we have CLT manufacturing in the UK? And do you think we should have or indeed uh, will have in the near future? To date, there's not been the demand. More recently, there's not been the certainty, whether it's potential restrictions under, you know, under fire regulations or the government's response to, to the climate emergency. Um, there's no financial incentives for people to invest in this kind of kit. Um, there are some issues around the types of timber that we grow in the UK. Um, what we do with it once we harvest it, um, most CLT is kiln derived to about 12 to 12% 12 moisture content before it's fabricated. We tend not to dry things out so much in the UK. Um, maybe it's a lack of ambition, a lack of investment, I think. But ultimately, the, the biggest issue, I think, is, is a long-term approach, which does need to be driven by, by government, I think, whether it's incentivizing people to build with timber um, or to stimulate um, UK markets and supply chains, the manufacturing base. And ultimately, we need to plant, you know, if we do need to be planting trees, then it makes sense to plant trees that we can have, um, we can make good use of. And from that point of view, I think, you know, I think in time we may well end up with it. Wood Knowledge Wales last month published reports are looking at homegrown um, production. There are ongoing studies in Scotland at the moment. And I spent a day with the Republic of Ireland's Forest Commission last year looking at ways they might begin to address the market. So it's certainly been considered. The UK does have you know, good forest resources, um, but we're still, um, still some way off yet, I think. I always think that we're rather suspicious of timber as a nation, really. I mean, you've only got to look at America and almost every every home from, as we both know, from the west to the east coast is made of timber. But here uh, we like uh, brick houses. Do, do, do you think we are just not very timber oriented as a building material? Certainly in England, we've not had that, you know, we've not had that tradition for a long time. In Scotland, it's very different. And of course, the moves being made in lighter gate, you know, in, 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 in stick systems in, in, in Scotland, and uh, the research being done around CLT and other forms of mass timber. 
um, that maybe require less infrastructure to produce are ongoing and are really interesting. Um, I think it's a fear of the unknown. You know, we work in a conservative industry. Um, risk issues are not always addressed um, as openly and as carefully as they might be. Um, but um, it's a complex, it's a complex point. And um, I think there has been this massive shift. And as we do look to, you know, what's been happening in the States, the UK was um, termed the global, well, suddenly London was called the global capital of CLT construction a few years ago. And even as I wrote the book, I was concerned that the, U the US would be kind of galloping ahead and superseding us in that respect. And in many ways, um, scale of operation, how it's been funded by the US government, which is a really interesting angle to stimulate domestic industry and supply chains. Um, I think that um, you know, the adoption there will soon outpace um, the use and um, application in the UK. Nick, well, thank you very much for your insights and uh, good luck with the book. It's a fascinating topic and I'm sure it'll be a bestseller. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you very much, Peter.